Hi, I'm Barb Nangle. I'm the founder and CEO of Higher Power Coaching and Consulting, LLC. I want to welcome you to my podcast, Fragmented to Whole, Life Lessons from 12-Step Recovery. On this podcast, I share my experience, strength, and hope from recovery. I don't support or endorse any particular 12-step recovery program, and I don't claim to speak for any 12-step fellowship. My hope is that you will find my words helpful in some way, whether you're in recovery or not. This is episode 118, How to Untie the Bundle of Negativity and Self-Judgment So You Can Have Peace and Ease. If you're a fan of this podcast and want to support it, please check me out on Patreon. If you're not familiar, Patreon is a platform created by creators for creators that allows them to be supported and rewarded for their work by their fans and followers. You can find me at patreon.com slash higher power coaching. I was talking with a client the other day about how I cleaned up all the negativity in my head. And I realized that I basically learned how to untie this giant bundle of negative shit in my head that included really severe self-judgment. And of course, the judging the hell out of other people, holding myself and others to some ridiculously high standards. And I don't think before that conversation, I had realized that all of these things were tied together in this one big bundle. So I want to talk through with how the untying of the bundle happened for me in the hopes that it'll work for you. So I think that for me, all of this started with the fact that I somehow grew up with the notion that I wasn't supposed to have flaws and that if I was going to have flaws... I goddamn well better hide them or at least lie about them. And because of that, that made me a really defensive person because I was so afraid that people would see my flaws. Now, this was all subconscious, mind you. Perhaps you can identify with me, which is why I'm sharing all this. And I'm really not sure how I internalized that message. I think some of it has to do with being shamed. But what resulted from all that was a ton of negative self-talk. And I cannot emphasize enough how fucking damaging negative self-talk is, especially because it doesn't happen from time to time. It's continual and usually for decades. The first step in cleaning all that up is awareness. You have to be aware of what's going on in your head. You have to start paying attention to what you're saying to yourself. It might be helpful to start writing it down, whether it's a note on your phone or you keep it on a notepad, because when you start seeing that shit written on paper, you are going to be flabbergasted. I know that happened for me. You're not going to believe how venomous that shit is. And you'll know I would never talk to somebody else like that. And I know for me, I realized, hell, I wouldn't allow someone else to talk to me like that. That dialogue has to go. So you've got to start with awareness. And then, of course, you have to stop the negative self-talk and the messages you're giving yourself. So what comes after awareness is analysis pay attention to the content of the messages going on in your head. When I started doing that, I came to realize that they were a bunch of bullshit. Not only that, analyze this. Why are you saying negative stuff to yourself and judging yourself? Is it so you can become a better person? Well, guess what? It's not working. In fact, it's backfiring. You're crippling yourself with the negativity and the self-judgment. Listen, people, I'm here to tell you right now, you were created on purpose. Do you really believe anything in creation was an accident? I mean, if something was an accident, do you really think it would be a human being? I mean, an amoeba, maybe. You know, maybe an amoeba might be an accident or a duckbill platypus. Sure, that could be an accident. But a human being, no way. You are not an accident. You're here on purpose and you were not created to beat the shit out of yourself. What's going on in your head is the primary source of your misery. 
If you know anything about computers, you know that if there's a bug in the programming, nothing on the computer is going to run well. You need to have the program debugged. You need to get that virus out of the program programming. The same is true with your brain. Your mind is what runs your life. If you have some kind of programming in there that's poisoning you, in this case, your thoughts, you've got to get rid of it. It's your thinking that is usually the major source of your difficulty. It's not that your very being is bad or wrong. It's not that you are a mistake. You are not an accident. You are not inherently broken or wrong. You are enough just the way you are, which, by the way, doesn't mean you can't improve. I know that I'm enough. I'm thriving. I love my life and I want more. I want to be more, do more, learn more, grow more. It doesn't mean I'm unsatisfied. It means I like growth. If you look at the natural world, growth is the evidence that life exists. The way we know if something is alive is if it grows. So you can know to the core of your being that you're perfect just the way you are and still want to grow and change. If you don't believe good things about yourself, I'm here to tell you that that can change. It's not other people that are the problem. It's not circumstances that are the problem. It's not societal systems that are the root of your problem. Though all those things may need to change, they're not the root of your problem. Those issues exist in my world, yet I'm still thriving. So it's not those things. It's your inner dialogue. I've talked many times on other episodes about how to clean that up, but I want to talk here about untying the bundle of negative self-talk, self-judgment, and judgment of others. I'll put some of my other suggested episodes in the show notes that will help you cleaning up all this stuff. For now, I'll share how the change process worked for me and what I take my clients through so that you can get started on your own. What happened for me was that when I started talking better to myself, I realized more and more of the thoughts in my head were BS. And when I started talking better to myself, I started feeling better and I started feeling better about myself and I stopped judging myself so much, which meant I was a lot more relaxed around other people because I wasn't in self-judgment all the time. I, when I was in self-judgment, bleh, sorry, when I was in self-judgment all the time, I was afraid of being judged by other people. And that meant I was on the defensive all the time. I put up all these different facades because I was afraid of being judged. And I wanted people to like me because I didn't like me. What was really interesting was when I stopped judging myself, and I started liking myself, I stopped judging other people so much. I let them off the hook instead of holding them to some crazy standard of how I thought they, quote, should be. This is a perfect example of the psychological notion of projection, which is that we project what's going on internally to the outside world. I was judging myself by holding myself to the impossible standards of you're not supposed to be flawed. And what I was projecting onto the world was you're also not supposed to be flawed. It was kind of like, wait, I'm not allowed to have flaws, so you better not have any flaws. Now I know that I am flossom. That is, I'm both flawed and awesome. They are not mutually exclusive concepts. And I also know other people are flossom. So what's going on internally for me now is what I'm projecting out into the world. So I've not only let myself off the hook, I also let all of you off the hook which means I'm much more willing to be open and vulnerable and let people see my flaws. 
and I'm much more accepting of you and everyone else and your flaws. When I grew up, if somebody made a mistake, especially if it had to do with something intellectual, like how to pronounce a word or understanding something or knowing something, I got shamed for that. Shame was used to keep me on this very narrow band of what I was allowed to do, think, be, and say. And now that I've stopped towing the family line, so to speak, where was I was supposed to be on this very narrow band of behavior and thoughts, oh my God, life is so much better. I am so much more relaxed in my life. I don't have this sense of urgency all the time. I'm not on edge all the time. My inner drugstore isn't activated all the time. I'm able to breathe much more easily and appreciate moments of serenity. When I was all tied up in this bundle of judgment and negativity and shame, I was projecting all that crap onto other people in the world, and it was miserable. So the key to untying the bundle is to start with what's going on in your head. Notice what you're saying to yourself. Pay attention to what's happening in your head and then assess the situation objectively. You're not the worst piece of shit that ever lived on the planet. In fact, if you think you are the worst person ever, that is arrogant as fuck. You may think it's the opposite of arrogant. You may think that it's humble to think you're lowly, but it's not. If you think you're the worst person ever, that is incredibly self-centered. You think it's all about you and that nobody has it worse than you. And I'm not saying this to shame you. I'm saying it to wake you up. There have been millions of people over millennia on this planet who have had it way worse than you. So wake up and start taking responsibility in your life for what's going on in your head. You were born on purpose. You were created by love, in love, for love, to love. And it's almost impossible to do that when you're hating on yourself. So untie that bundle of negativity and judgment by beginning with the words that are going on in your head. Now, as I said earlier, if you need help with this, I have a few other episodes that will help you. I'll leave them in the show notes. You might also want to join my membership community, which is called Secure, Loved, and Brave, and will help you learn how to start loving yourself. Secure, Loved, and Brave is a loving membership community to help you create deeper connections while feeling safe so you can grow into your power. It's $47 a month for the first three months and 97 after that. It includes two group coaching calls a month, a Facebook group to help stay connected in between, and a shit ton of worksheets and journal prompts and handouts to help you have a better life and grow to learn how to love yourself better. I'll put the link in the show notes to that too, or you can find it on my website, which is on my Instagram bio. So go forth and love yourself. That's it for today. If you've been finding this podcast helpful, please consider a donation to ensure I can continue. To choose the level of support that feels right to you, go to patreon.com slash higher power coaching. Please also review it on Apple Podcasts, like and subscribe to it on your favorite podcast outlet. I'd really appreciate it. And it helps others to find the podcast. Now, if someone in particular came to mind when you listen to this episode, please share it with them. And don't forget, I'm on Instagram at Higher Power Coaching. I run group and private coaching programs on creating healthy boundaries. And if that sounds like something that would interest you, head on over to barbchat.net where you can get on my calendar for a free 30-minute better boundaries consultation. My ideal client is someone who is ripe for change. If that's you, then go to barbchat.net and get on my calendar. My goal with all of my work is to help you make lasting changes in your life like I've made deep lasting changes in my life. Remember, it's never too late to recover. No one is beyond hope and healing is possible. 
Thanks for listening.